The goal for this segment is to allow the user to restart the game that they're currently playing or to pick a new board size and try a different game. So let's start out by adding a menu option for restarting the current game. So let's go into the project and go into resources and we're going to create a new resource directory, Android resource directory, which is of type menu. Inside of this directory, we'll create a menu resource file called menu main. And let's start out with just one menu item. We'll give this menu option a title of refresh, but we'd actually like for this action to have an icon associated with it. So we'll create a new vector asset called refresh, give it a name of IC refresh, and then tap on finish. And we're going to set the icon attribute of this menu option to be this newly created icon. We'd like for this menu option to show up as an action rather than being buried by default inside of the overflow menu, which is what we're seeing here. So I'm going to hit the show as action attribute and hit always, which indicates to the Android system that we want this to be an icon rather than text in the three dot menu. Now we have to actually inflate this menu resource file that we just created in main activity. So there's a method we will override called on create options menu. So if you just start typing on create options menu, you should find it. And we are going to get the menu inflator and inflate the r.menu menu main. And the second parameter here is the menu, which is the parameter. And then we'll return true because this method on create options menu requires a Boolean return value. Now we want to get notified when the user has tapped on that particular menu item. So first, going back into menu main, uh, we want to add an ID. I'll call this MI refresh, which stands for menu item refresh. Copy that. And then the way we get notified of the user tapping on an option menu is through this method on options item selected. So here, we'll use the when construct. So we'll say when item dot item ID. So based on the item ID of this menu item, we'll take a different action. So the only one we have right now is r.id.mi refresh. And in this scenario, we want to set up the game again. So setting up the game again basically entails doing all this logic again, where we create a new memory game, we set up a new adapter, and then we set up the recycler view with this new data. Let's push all of this logic into a separate function, which we can then easily reuse. So I'll call this setup board and paste in that logic in the newly created function. And then my preference is usually to put all of these private functions below all of the functions that we're overriding. I'm going to put this down here. Awesome. So now let's just simply call setup board right here. Let's try it. So hopefully now we should see a menu option up here where we can refresh. So let's just click a few of these. And then if I hit this option now, I should be able to refresh the whole game. Yep. And you can see that now we have different cards show up. Awesome. One thing that is worth doing though, is that if I'm in the middle of a game like this, I've already made three moves and I already have found one pair. I'd like to warn the user that they're about to lose their progress on the game. And so right here, if the number of moves in the memory game, get num moves, if that's more than zero and the user hasn't won the game yet, then we should be showing a alert dialogue to the user, informing them that this is a dangerous operation because they might be very close to winning, but they accidentally hit the refresh button, for example. So I'm going to delegate that work of showing the alert dialog to a method because we're actually going to show several alert dialogs depending on which menu option the user taps on. So I'll say show alert dialog. And then create a function for this. We're going to leverage the alert dialog builder in order to create and show the dialog. It takes in a context. We'll pass in a title, which will be passed in as a parameter. Same thing with the view. And then we'll get to the negative and positive button click listener in a bit. But first, let's go back and add the title and view as parameters. Now we'll set the negative button text to be cancel. And by passing null here, we're basically saying just dismiss this alert dialog if the user taps on cancel. We're also going to add in a positive button, which will be OK. And here we need to actually take action based on 
the user tapping on the OK button. If we go into the declaration of set positive button, the second parameter is on click listener, which is an interface which has one method. And that one method has two parameters, but neither of these is actually relevant to what we need to do here. So in order to indicate that we're still adhering to that signature, we're going to put in underscores to say that that's the method we're overriding. And this is where we now need to take the action based on what happens when the user taps on OK. And that has to be something that's passed in as a parameter to show alert dialog. So I'm going to add a third parameter here called positive button click listener, and that will be of type view.onClickListener. Now we can call the onClick method of the positive click listener, which takes in a parameter of view, which we don't care about, so we'll pass in null here. So now let's look at how we can use this. In the show alert dialog method, we'll pass in the title, which will be quit your current game. We don't need to show any additional information, so the view of the alert dialog can be null. And then we're going to pass in the positive button click listener, which is what should happen when the user confirms this alert dialog. And we're just going to call setup board. And in the else condition, the user is not in the middle of a game, so we can just unconditionally call setup board. So if I make some moves like this, and now I refresh, you can see that before setting up the game again, we had this dialog, which has the title that we specified along with two buttons, cancel or OK. So if I can cancel, all we're doing is exiting the alert dialog, but we haven't actually taken the action, which is what we want. On the other hand, if I tap OK, now we are properly resetting the board, which is exactly what we want. One other issue that you'll notice is that we aren't resetting the value of these text views properly when we call setup board. So let's fix that. So go into the setup board method. So depending on the board size, we would like to reset the value of those text views, text views at the bottom. So board size is an enum. And so now, because it's an enum, we know what are the possible values of this. So we'll have Android Studio help us to add the remaining else branches. In the easy case, we'll first set the TV num moves text view. And we'll set that to be equal to the current game being played, which will be easy. And that's a four by two grid. And the number of pairs is going to start at zero. And there are four pairs total. In the medium case, we'll describe that the board is six by three. And the number of pairs total will be nine. And then finally, in the hard case, the board dimensions will be six by four. And the number of pairs is 12, because there are 24 cards. So I'm making some moves. And so now if I reset, you can see the number of pairs has gone back to zero. And I also reset this back to uh, a description of what game we're playing. Awesome. The next thing we want to do is add one more menu option, which will allow us to change the size. So right now, the only game we can play is easy. But I'd like to have one more menu option, which allows us to select easy, medium, or hard. So for that, let's add one more menu option in menu main. And this one, I want it to actually show up in the overflow menu. So I'm going to say show as action never. And the ID of this will be mi new size. Title will be choose new size. All right, so going back into main activity, in order to handle that menu item being clicked, in the on options item selected in the when expression, we'll add the ID and we'll create a function called show new size dialog. One thing I'll also do is add return true every time that we're handling the menu item clicked, both for the refresh and this one. So in this new function, show new size dialog, we're going to call that function, show alert dialog that we just created, and the title will be choose new size. We're going to pass in a view. I'll pass in null for now, but that should be a list of all the different options of board sizes. And then when the user taps on OK, we should change the value of the board size variable in the main activity. All right, so the objective here is that we want to create a new view which allows the user to pick between the various board sizes. And the way we're going to do this is have a radio group. And that radio group will have three radio buttons, easy, medium, hard. And that's how the user can specify which game they want to play. And so we're going to inflate that view, similar to what we did in the adapter, the context, which is this. And we want to inflate r.layout.dialog board size and pass in null for the second parameter. And this is going to return to us a board size view. So now we have to define dialog board size. So hit that red light bulb and let's create a layout resource file. 
And then constraint layout is fine for the root element. Let's go into the design tab. I'd like to I'd like to drag out a radio button group. Let's give the radio group an ID, a radio group. And let's also add some horizontal constraints. On the left side, it'll be zero DP from the parent and also on the right side. That means we can make the layout with zero TP or match constraint. Now let's drag out one, two, three radio buttons. Let's give the first radio button an ID of RB easy, and then give it a updated text of easy four by two to describe the game. The second radio button can be RB medium, and the text will be medium, which is six by three. And then the third radio button will be RB hard, and that will have a text of hard six by four. In the component tree, you can see that red exclamation mark, which indicates error. And it says that there's a missing constraint on the radio group. So if I go into the radio group, we can see that it's actually not vertically constrained. So I'll add a zero DP top margin from the radio group to the parent, and that should resolve that issue. One other thing I'll do is add a left and right margin of 16 DP and an eight DP margin on the top, just so we can create some space between the radio group and the parent alert dialog. Okay, so now we have the dialog board size, so this view is fine. So now uh, we want to figure out if the user taps on the OK button, then the code here will get executed. The value of the board size that we set in here will depend on which radio group button was selected. And so we need to first define that radio group. We need to pull it out of the board size view, so I'll do that now. And the radio group will mandate that only one of the buttons inside of it can be selected at a given time. So depending on which of those was selected, which is a checked radio button ID, we will set the board size accordingly. So we want to add in three IDs here, RB easy. And in that case, the board size should be easy. If the ID selected was medium, then the board size should be medium. And otherwise, the board size should be hard. One more thing before we try this out is when we open up the dialog, I want the current size board to be the one which is automatically selected in the in the dialog. So depending on the board size, we want to tell the radio group which item should be checked. So in the case of easy, then we want to check the RB easy. And once we have specified a new board size, then we simply call setup board. And that should take care of redrawing our whole board. Before running this, we need to actually pass in the board size view, which we constructed on 77, and pass it into the show alert dialog method. Let's run it and see what happens. Then we are able to see this radio button group, and we have the easy radio button selected because we were playing a four by two grid. Let's select medium and see how the recycler view gets updated to properly show the 18 cards. And let's also try out the hard version. So if we go to that dialog again, we see the medium is pre-selected and hard shows us the six by four grid. And you can also see at the bottom, the game info is also correct. The last thing I wanna do in this part is to update the color of the refresh icon because it's a little bit hard to see right now. So this icon is what we just created. It's called IC refresh. And the color of it is dictated by this attribute here called Android Tint. So I'm going to replace that and just use FFF, which is white. And running the app again, we do see that the menu icon is now white. Now we are fully done building out the memory game played with the default icons. In the next part, we'll allow users to create their own custom memory games by taking photos from their phone and using that as the back of each memory card instead of these icons. I'm feeling pretty excited and I hope you do too. If you liked this video, hit that like button and subscribe so you know when the next part comes out. See you soon.